and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I am doing a comparison video that some of you probably think is a little bit redundant, but I'm comparing Honda's 1980 CB900 Custom with their 1982 CB900 Custom. And previously, before owning these bikes, I actually thought that the, the model line had remained exactly the same through all three years of production, but Honda made a significant number of changes to this motorcycle over the course of time that it was produced. And uh, today we're just going to go over some of those and, and kind of what it means as far as how the bikes ride and handle. Both of these bikes are relatively stock. The only difference really being the 1980 has a aftermarket sissy bar on it and this 1982 has a Mac 4 into 1 exhaust system. Other than that these bikes are completely stock. In 1982 Honda went to twin piston calipers on the front brakes and that's really because the brakes that they used on the 1980 CB900 Custom were, were parts bin brakes as were the rotors, and, and they were both off of bikes like the, the CB750. Really, the brakes on the 1980 weren't quite up to the task of stopping that heavy a motorcycle. The braking was honestly so bad that it was dangerous. So what I had to do was upgrade the rotors and pads to uh, brakes from EBC, and I also upgraded the brake lines on this bike to steel braided units from Spiegler. Really it transformed the brakes and, and brought it up to modern standards. On my 1982 I really haven't had to do anything to the brakes. If I do anything I'll probably put Spiegler lines on it just to improve the braking feel and the directness of the braking feel. But honestly this bike stops just fine. They both do now. I'll actually uh, take these bikes both out on the road and kind of let you hear what they sound like on the road. You know kind of go over what they feel like back to back. So I'll suit up and uh, you can come along. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> I'm riding Honda's 1982 CB900 Custom. And today I want to talk about specifically how this bike compares to Honda's 1980 CB900 Custom. And over the course of just a couple of years, Honda really introduced a host of improvements to that bike. And honestly, it's more so than what I would have thought originally. I thought that the CB900 Custom was basically the same throughout its three-year model run, but it wasn't. And what Honda did on the 1982 is uh, they really improved uh, several key aspects of the bike while leaving the, the really good attributes alone, which is a nice... Sometimes manufacturers don't always do that. But what they did in, uh, in the later bikes, as opposed to the early ones, is they transitioned to dual piston calipers in the front, and they also changed the brake rotors themselves. And the brake rotors and, and that, that combination of calipers and rotors really improved the braking performance. Uh, to the point that on, on this 82, I have not had to upgrade the brakes, and on my 1980 CB900 Custom, the rotors were warped. They were really the same rotors that had appeared on all sorts of Hondas. And uh, they just, they, they weren't up to the task of stopping a, a big heavy bike. So the improved braking is a real, uh, real area where the Honda improved. And then the next area is the gearing in the transmission. And when I ride my 1980, uh, it, it pulls very nicely 
and it's got the same dual range transmission however the 1980 is geared much shorter in high range and so it's consequently it consequently revs at a much higher rpm in top gear in high range and so it just it does it does not feel as relaxed as this 1982 It still feels like a quality product and I still really enjoy it. Now I've upgraded Now I've upgraded my brakes on my 1980 Honda with the new EBC brake pads and rotors and Spiegler steel braided brake lines and so now it, it really does stop with authority. But there's nothing really I can do to upgrade the transmission and make it taller like it is in this bike. And so where that really comes into play is when you're cruising down the road and at highway speeds, this bike is just really nice and relaxed. Uh, I'm running along in top gear right now and about 60 miles an hour, I think equates to about 3,700 RPM. And it's just very, very smooth. Now this bike, I have both of these bikes in the garage currently, and uh, this 82 also has a Mack exhaust on it, so it has a little bit more of an attitude with the exhaust sound, uh, but it's, it's not obnoxious. But the bike, both of the bikes handle really nicely, they have excellent stability. I would say the 1980, probably because of the lower mileage on the bike, the seat's a little bit more comfortable than this 1982. Feels like after about a half an hour, I've, I've sunk through the padding on this, on this seat and the one on the 1980, so it just seems to be a little bit firmer at that point. Well, these are just both fantastic machines and it's just amazing to me that, that even bikes from the same manufacturer with just a couple of little changes it really can change the personality of them it can change the the way they uh, respond or the way they make you feel about them and and that the same goes for modifications that you actually make to the bikes I'm on Honda's 1980 CB900 Custom. Man, that is a smooth bike. Yeah, it's amazing. I know it's quiet on the video, but what, what doesn't really translate is even at higher RPM, there is absolutely no vibration through the bars on this bike. It just really is buttery smooth. Well, how does this bike compare to Honda's 1982 CB900 Custom? That's a great question, and you would think that being the same model, these bikes would be so similar that it would be pointless to have two of them. But they really do have uh, some significant differences, and, and consequently, when you ride them, they just have a different feel. This one is geared lower and I'm in top gear right now in high range and at, at basically at 60 miles an hour it's right at or just above 4,000 rpm whereas on the 1982 Honda the engine is spinning over at about 3,700 rpm at 60 miles an hour so it just the, the 1982 feels significantly more relaxed Another improvement that Honda made, they, they changed the brakes and so whereas I'm still running the stock brakes on my 82, I've had to upgrade the brake lines and uh, rotors and brake pads on this bike to get equivalent stopping power. But they both, currently they both stop really well. 
because this bike is geared lower in top gear and uh, in high range, it always feels a little bit snappier than the 82. And so I would say the 82 actually just feels a little bit more relaxed. But this, this bike always feels like it's got maybe a little bit more power at any speed and, and that's just simply a function of the RPM that the engine's turning. This bike also, for whatever reason, feels a little bit, uh, it doesn't feel quite as roomy in the cockpit as the 82. And I've looked at them pretty closely. I, it may just be a function of the handlebars. The handlebars might come back a little bit more on this one. But they, the bars even look somewhat similar, so I'm not sure what the difference necessarily is there. Shifting-wise, I do feel like the shift quality on the 1982 is a little bit more direct than this bike. This bike is very, very smooth shifting, but it, it just doesn't have the positive engagement between gears. It doesn't have the same feel as the 1982. I'm not sure if that was an internal change or if it's just something that is in my head. I'm not 100% not sure there. But regardless, either of these bikes is really smooth and refined and fun to ride. The, this bike has a stock exhaust and I really like the fact that it does. It, it's quiet. And I think it just adds on this particular machine. It's got a nice exhaust note, um, but it it adds to a sense of refinement on this bike. And I just think this is I like the the looks of the 1980. It's got the silver painted engine, and it just doesn't look quite as modern as the 82 does with the blacked out engine and the two tone paint. And to me, it looks a little bit more vintage. And uh, I think that's cool. On this 1980 Honda CB900 Custom, I almost always leave this in high range. There's really, because it's geared as low as it is, there's really no point in going into the low range and so it just it kind of cuts out what's essentially unnecessary. I just use it as a five speed. Really with either of the 82 Really, with either the 82 CB900 Custom or this 1980, uh, they're, they're such a nice riding bike that um, they're just pleasant to drive. And it's kind of fun to have them, these two bikes. I like the fact that they have different exhausts on them, and it just kind of accentuates their different personalities. Some of the other differences you can see, they did change the paint color on the engine. Now they went with the all silver on the 1980 and they had blacked out a lot of the engine in 82. They also went with some really nice two-tone paint here. And I honestly think this color is very close to the burgundy that's on here, but the, the paint jobs look significantly different, different with this candy apple red thrown in. And that's really a, a matter of taste, you know, which one you like better. The 1982 came with dual horns, it has big dual horns on it. And uh, the 1981 just comes with a single horn. So the, the 82 is definitely louder and consequently a little bit safer. And probably the biggest change that uh, is noticeable when you drive the bike is the 1980 is, even though it's got the the five-speed transmission with high and low range. It's honestly geared pretty low in high range. And uh, kind of to rectify that, they made the gearing a lot taller on the 1982. And, and so consequently, this bike is revving about the same as like a GS 1100 on the highway.
at highway speeds. At, at 60 miles an hour, they're both revving around between 3,500 and 3,700 RPM. Uh, while the, uh, the 1980 revs about 500 RPM higher at, at the same equivalent speed, and it, it just feels shorter legged. That's not, it's certainly not as relaxed on the highway. So that kind of covers some of the differences here. Uh, instrumentation on both bikes is the same. Uh, they both have the air suspension and uh, they, they ride similarly for whatever reason. The 1982 to me feels a little bit longer and lower, though I don't think the chassis geometry changed. And I think part of that is simply the fact that uh, the 1980 has the aftermarket sissy bar on it and it just it makes it look shorter but they're both fun bikes to ride they both ride nicely and because of the gearing changes uh, that were made to it and the fact that the 82 is running a different exhaust system uh, they do have different personalities the 1980 Honda CB900 Custom it just feels the most like a gentleman's bike uh, it's very smooth, very refined. Uh, it has a stock exhaust. Uh, in fact, it's the only one of my bikes that has stock exhaust right now. But it just, it's the only one with stock exhaust that I actually wouldn't change. Uh, the stock exhaust really goes with the personality of it. And uh, I enjoy riding it. It's a, it's a nice place to, to spend an afternoon for sure.